just for this because it's nice and laid back, I just wanted to talk about characters that you played with or yeah. who you coached. Yeah. Um, my and brothers in arms. Yeah. My yeah. brothers in Your arms. brothers in arms, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, I think. They are, they are brothers in arms t to me. They're like friends for I, life. Yeah, I would. You know, even if you even if you didn't socialize with them all the time, or frankly didn't you know like them, you know, a hundred percent as persons, you know, all of them, you know, which is you know, un unavoidable, you know, in a group of twenty five guys, yeah. you know. But I, I, I still respect them so much, you know, and you know, and, and you know, and most of them are loved, you know, and you know, they, yeah, I, I see them as brothers. Yes, we don't really have that much contact anymore. Uh, we only see each other you know, now and then, you know. But you know, when we do, it's like being back in the days, you know. So yeah. It's fantastic, yeah. See, when you think back to the Barcelona, I know we didn't speak about it out there that much, but the Barcelona game where on paper Celtic shouldn't win the game. But there was oh, a, no. a magical feeling about the club, it was yeah. 125th. See, leading into that, talk to me about the preparation. I mean, how do you prepare to know how to nullify a team like that, but also break them down as well? Uh, the most important thing was, obviously, uh, to make sure these guys, because obviously we weren't players ourselves anymore, uh, but obviously Neil and myself have played in a really, you know, really strong team, a, a team that wouldn't be afraid of any team visiting us. You know, we were expected to win against anyone at home. You know, it was a failure if we lost to Real Madrid or Barcelona at home. So trying to, uh, and I know obviously it's different days now. It was that ga gap between my playing career and being in, in, co in management. It was a gap as well, you know, how football was changing a wee bit, you know, how you play it and mentally and, and physically as well, you know. So, so it was important for us to try to get into the head to, to make sure you can win against Barcelona. We're playing at home. Mm. At home is our cause and, you know, we should beat anyone at home, you know. Uh, and then, Obviously, uh, Neil as manager was really, it was important uh, to really drill our players to don't mad mark like Neil or Messi. As it doesn't matter where he goes, do not follow him. Because, you know, Neil Messi, the, the genius he's always been and is maybe to this to this day, you know, um, and especially he was in his prime then, yeah. you know, more or less, you know, he was just, you know, I was a, he's just incredible, this guy. But he, was, he wasn't really that involved, you know, in the build-ups or not. He just wants the ball when, he, when he's interested, you know. And he wonders a lot, you know, by, by doing that, you know, obviously he tricks a lot of teams, you know. So the match plan was to make sure do not man mark or you know follow Messi too much. You know, uh, make sure we are really narrow, compact. You know, if we're going to let them play through us, it needs to be outside of our fullbacks or was usually the the, the the wide midfielders because sometimes we were eight in the line. You know, because yeah. obviously they had so much ball. But we were adamant that we had a chance, you know, especially knowing that yeah, we couldn't we couldn't compete with them football, uh, you know, football-wise. We, we couldn't compete with them technically, and, and you know, and when it comes to skills, but we could threaten them on set pieces mm -hmm. and counterattacks, and especially set pieces. We actually put in, you know, uh, a number of minutes before the game because that was we felt were our chance, you know, that physically, you know, and when it comes to set pieces to uh, to score a goal. Usually, as a Swede, I always get the question: Who was the best striker, Henrik or Slatan? And <laughs> and obviously in Sweden, because Slatan won so many uh, titles, you know, in Italy and, and even in Spain. Uh, uh, he's seen as, probably because of social media as well as exploded, he's seen as obviously that he was a proper, proper world class striker. I, I, I rate Henrik so much higher than Slat. So many characters I think about in that team. Uh, you've got the homegrown talent, 
you've got the guys like you were talking th about, about through there about the recruitment. Um, you know, Charlie McGrew takes that corner kick. First signing in your tenure with Neil Lennon. Yeah. And it's headed home by Victor Onyama. You told us all about Van Dijk through there. Juan Yama, t talk to us about his kind of Celtic introduction and the player he became, because he became a monster yeah. man. Fantastic monster. player. Yeah. I'm actually sitting here and a bit disappointed that Victor didn't do more in the game. Do you know that? Uh, he had a great career. Also, don't get me wrong, Southampton and Tottenham, uh, I just felt he could be a world beater, you know? Yeah. So strong, uh, you know, uh, technically good, you know, leader. And we sometimes, you know, used him as a, a centre half now and then, you know. Uh, he didn't like that. <laughs> he always wanted to play centre mid, you know. See, and, and but he's one of the nicest, you know, persons uh, yeah, I, I can remember as a player. He was really quiet, you know. Mm. And he just wanted to play, play the game, you know. But he didn't, he didn't want to. He saw it as a failure when we now and then, you know, uh, wanted to play him as centre half because he could do that as well, you know. He could do that as well. Uh, but you know, he, he, you know, he, he could have. He became an extremely good player, but could have become a world beater for me. But you know, it happens. You don't know why it happens. You know that you don't maybe um, reach the the maximum of, of what I thought he had in him. But <laughs> great player, you know, great great player, and really important for us during our tenure. You know. When, so now, uh, when I also listen, you got him, you know, coming in early age and all the you know, strong physically, having him for a play, and then you have Charlie Malgu, yeah, with the best wand in the business, his left peg, yes, absolutely, unbeliever, as good as Alan Thompson, who I would I would put in any of my best mm. of teams, yeah. you know, yeah. because his left foot. I mean the squad. Just phone home and say, no, I'm not going to come back you know, tonight. Uh, I'm going to be involved in the squad, you know, I'm going to at, at least get a wee, wee feeling of uh, this mega game, the club and all that, you know. So uh, Saturday uh, is coming up. You wake up, you have breakfast, then we go for a walk, all of us, you know, and uh, at 12 o'clock, roughly lunchtime, the starting 11 comes up. And my fucking name is in there, you know. I think I <laughs> The other two players I want to talk about from that team, Johan, the big man at the back, Fraser Forster. Yeah. He came in on loan, he came in on loan, he became an absolute hero. Wow. Massive. And that performance, I'm struggling to remember a Celtic goalkeeping performance that would better than. I wonder if we ever, during my lifetime, going to see a better performance. That was just crazy. It was incredible, you know. It's, and we needed that, you know. Then, uh, despite our heroics, despite Vanyama's uh, uh, corner and the header, uh, and Tony Watts, you know, obviously uh, bit of a fluke goal in a way that obviously Mascherano misses the ball. But you know, it happens. You know, he took his chance. You know, yeah. so uh, despite Tony's uh, counterattack and, and Victor's uh, header, you know, without Frisi Forster, we would have lost that game. You know, yeah. because for me today, I, I've never ever ever seen a better uh, goalkeeper performance, I and mean, he was insanely good. You know, and, and yes. We were lucky with the post and the burn, uh, but you know, it happens. He was there, you know, and he saved everything. And, and, and you know, uh, uh, I have to say, I only have, you know, uh, Fraser was one of them, you know, uh, that you don't really see that much anymore when it comes to goalkeepers, you know, really big and strong. Mm. The way we liked them, you know, the guys who could dominate the, the, the penalty box. He should have actually dominated the penalty box a wee bit more because he's, he liked to stay on his line, you know, but he wasn't best done with his feet. But we didn't need it back then, you know. That's that's more of a modern thing nowadays. Yeah. I, I just felt, you know, he was the best shot stopper I've ever seen, you know, for a while. And, and you know, during, during my four years as the manager, Chris Foss was crazy good. Gaffer, yeah. He's the only one I call a gaffer. Uh, no, uh, Martin is um, the only one 
I probably would have been able to run through a brick fall for. Um, he changed my Celtic career um, in a way. Uh, I know he wasn't too sure. Uh, back then, uh, Mark Reaper was still at the club. He was obviously having a, a serious toe problem and couldn't play. So it was actually him whispering to, 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 to the gaffer that, uh, you know, he's a son half, Mjalby. You, you shouldn't look at him as a midfielder. Thank God. One final player, Johan, from that memorable evening, Tony Watt. Young guy, 18 year old, comes on, does the unthinkable. Yeah. By the way, Mascherano brought him down later on in the game as yeah. well. How do you temper that though? Uh, for a boy so young, how do you how do you deal with that? Uh, no, I think unfortunately that was was happened in the end. You know, uh, I think we all knew straight away. You know, with the, obviously uh, this goal against Barcelona and obviously worldwide recognition because he scored a goal, there would be. Uh, a lot of voices in Tony's ears, uh, you know, because uh, obviously suddenly he's going to be obviously, you know, a hot property and he hadn't really, he hadn't become, you know, a regular in the side yet, you know, obviously we knew that he had talent, you know, because he was raw, Tony was raw, you know, strong but great runner, you know, a, a nose for goal, but still not making maybe the best decisions you know when to take uh, your shot or when to obviously yeah. pass the ball or, and he wasn't the hardest worker I mean we were we, we were trying to tell him you know every training said Tony you know you I mean you're so strong you're, you're aggressive you're quick and, and, and you can run you know you should you have to you have to improve obviously the the game how, when you have the, the back against the goal you know to make it stick you know for yeah. the team and you have to mentally understand that you have to make to, to, to work much harder. Mm. Yeah. Much harder in the game. Off the ball, you know. You know, maybe it was unfair, you know, but I was just picturing Henrik, you know, when I said, you know, because also Henrik was always the one who worked hardest off the ball, you know. So I yes. Because we were worried, we were worried with that goal for Tony, you know, that obviously we could see he had a lot of, you know, skill and a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, powerful tools to become a really good striker, but personally, I don't know what happened, but um, it happens, you know, that you listen to the wrong persons and, and, and you don't take on board the right advice. And, and uh, don't get me wrong, you know, I, I love him a bit. He's a great kid, Tony, great, great kid, you know, but I think we all can agree that sitting here right now, we, sh we should have seen a better 20 watt career on the football pitch. 100%. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Look at the man. He signed under Joe Vengos. He suffered the John Barnes era and then Martin O'Neill came to the club, took us to a European final and this man here is a passionate Celtic fan, you've seen it tonight, please raise the roof for Johan Mjölby!